Hey guys, we're in Fort Collins, Colorado. I'm hanging out with a couple of friends. This is Jason, this is Jeremy. Jeremy, you and I, we met at like a church group and we were talking about your life here in Fort Collins because you're you riding your bike around delivering some newspapers and things for CSU. Yes. You have a background in journalism. You've actually helped with EVR a little bit and you two work together. Well, what's that newspaper called, Jason? Uh, the Collegian. The Collegian. CSU Collegian newspaper. That, it's fantastic. So getting around town, having a lifestyle that's like active. I think Fort Collins was rated like one of the top cycling cities recently. It's, yeah, it's uh, number five now. Awesome. Yeah. Now these types of bikes, there's we're going a little bit beyond the around town newspaper stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's where this whole idea germinated. Okay, it was you were kind of taking out some of these friends over here, going on these Backcountry rides, what do you call it? Bike packing. Bike packing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bike packing. It's, uh, it's like hiking, but on your bike. And camping. Okay, and, camping. and so, and then Jeremy and I were talking, and you were like, well, there's this ride coming up. I kind of like to do that. And you knew that I was in e bikes. And so I actually reached out to Tom, Tom Wilson at Small Planet EV up in Longmont. And I was like, Tom, do you have any bikes that maybe they haven't sold or that you could loan us or something? Because Jeremy, you have Crohn's disease, right? right. Can you give me like a two second? What does that mean? What is yeah. so, uh, Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. Crohn's disease is an autoimmune um, inflammation of the s small intestine in my case. Okay. Um, I've had three surgeries on the small intestine and it sort of limits my ability to be active. Um, so biking for any extended period of time is pretty much impossible for me with a traditional bicycle. And you said you have like, maybe there's a hip sensitivity too or something? Yeah, I do have a hip injury. I have chronic bursitis, my right hip. Ouch. So yeah, that limits my mobility with that hip as well. Okay, so yeah, I got into e-bikes because I have a knee sensitivity and hearing this from, from Jeremy, I was just, you know, we were inspired. So Tom kind of got like a hookup situation and we ended up getting this, this is the Felt Lebowski, right? So it's a fat tire, electric bike powered by Bosch. Um, this is an older model. It's like 2016 or something. It just was, it was still on the show floor. We got a great discount. So I wanted to do a shout out to him, but that empowered you and with your help and guidance and coaching and some extra accessories and stuff, oh, yeah. he, he was able to go. No one else had an e-bike on this trip, right? No, no, he was the only one that had the assistance. But we figured, seeing as how we're all able bodies and he needed a little help and he really wanted to learn how to do it. Yeah. What's better than using the e-bike for it? Well, let's hit some of the, tell me about your bike too, okay? Like what, what are we, what's the platform here? It's also Wood Smoke 29er Plus. Um, it's got 180 millimeter shock on the front you can lock out 29er so, plus size tires 29er, yeah 29er plus and then it's got Fantastic. a one by 11 system in the back just kind of been rigged a little bit Who, who's the tell me about this this is a custom bag it's a, a bedrock bags out of durango Colorado. Bedrock bags okay so and you've got this huge like accessory and are, bar and those are like the standard jones bars like every bike packer kind of just goes with those so this was you know Jeremy's bike was sort of set up as best as possible. We got some cheap paneers no, and stuff off was, Amazon, and yeah, it was a great, it was a great bike for him. I mean, I rode it. I had a blast. What did you think? Is the first time on an e-bike? Yeah, first time I've ever ridden an e-bike, a fat e-bike. I've ridden like a towny e-bike and like, you know, a commuter e-bike, but I've never ridden a fat e-bike. Okay. And it was like it was super responsive and like it was fun to ride and it was cushy and we just had to pump up the tires a little bit for some city riding and that was it put well, on a front rack and this is i mean again i'm super excited about what you did to this bike and at the same time i look at yours and i'm like oh this is pro level like everything's dialed in and there were some compromises because the battery took up the main triangle yeah. but it gave it gave jeremy like the opportunity to, to go yeah so let's let's come over to the table and like chat with everyone um, thank you so much for being here, you guys. So we have Stephanie, Brian, and Luke, right? And Luke, you have to jet, so I want to start with you and just ask a couple questions. Um, this was one of your first trips too, right? This was yeah, pretty much new my experience. First, yeah, first bike packing trip, so brand new experience for me. And your bike, we were just talking about, you know, kind of doing the best we could with like some Amazon accessories and stuff. Your whole bike was kind of jerry-rigged or something, is that right? A little bit, yeah. So it's about a five-year-old bike. It's kind of like a cross-country bike that I had been riding on trails, um, like getting into mountain biking. And we just kind of rigged it up. We put a front derailleur on it and strapped some bags on. I some got extra some, gears. Yeah, I got some bags. And I had some camping gear from doing camping previously, but never on my bike. And you lived, right? Like you still got your legs and everything? Yes, feeling good. How far was this trip? Like how far did you guys go? Uh, about a hundred miles, I think. Oh maybe. my gosh. Yeah, in two days. Wow. Just about. That's pretty phenomenal. And yeah. did you have a chance to like try some of these other bikes all loaded up, the electric bike? I actually did not hop on the electric didn't bike. Didn't have, you're like, I don't need that. Yeah, right? we, I was on my bike enough, I felt like in those two days. That might actually be, you know, so Jeremy, we were talking about the assist levels you used. I think you said eco and then maybe up to tour occasionally yeah. right mm -hmm. and you, did you have enough capacity because you had two batteries 
So yeah, I, I did I did pretty good on the first battery actually. So 56 miles, most of it uphill on the first day. Wow. All in one battery. And I found that the range when I when we got to our campsite, the range when it was in eco mode, uh, the range said that I had seven miles left. But I held down the reset button, and after holding down the reset button, it said I had 24 miles left. Okay. So I guess the range adjusts itself, you know, according to the kind of terrain that you're that you're traveling on. So going uphill. I have about seven miles left. So, so you guys, one of the topics that comes up a lot with e-bikes is like, ah, it's cheating. Or, hey, it's not allowed on these these trails. Speak plainly. What are your thoughts? Did you get any criticism out there or any concerns? I thought it was awesome yeah. um, being able to uh, um, keep up if uh, you're not out there riding on an, a daily basis and you want to do 100 miles in two days um, without torturing yourself too much. I think it's a, an excellent <laughs> option. <laughs> Torture. Right? Yeah, like he's like, I love this. Well, especially if you have health concerns or, you know, bad joints. Uh, I give myself probably another 15, 20 years before I'm going to be on one of those Checking on a regular basis. You know? Yeah. If I have an injury, I'm definitely going to be looking into that. Um, I uh, ride a cargo bike, big dummy with a lot of cargo. Nice. So I'm definitely looking into uh, putting something to help me on the, the long haul with it. That was pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, it was it was nice to zip up to speed without having to push myself or feel like I have to put too much into over -exert. it. Overexert. Yeah, overexert. What about the noise? Did you guys feel like it made extra noise or? Mm -mm. No, no. I never heard it at all. Yeah, I, no. I, I could I could hear a hum when I was next to him, but that wasn't come concerning. Up like right behind you here, but Jeremy actually used to be in choir, so that might have been humming. <laughs> that might have actually been. Yeah. No, I'm just. <laughs> I'm just teasing. Yeah, thank you. And yeah, for sure. And then, okay, so Stephanie, as the the lone female on the trip, yeah, right. What was what was your experience like? You know, just is this your first time going out there? Or? No, I've done it a few times now. Uh, last year, Jason and I actually did the Ramble Ride, put okay. on by New Belgium, which was a little under 200 miles from Fort Collins to Steamboat. Wow. So oh my yeah, gosh. that was a that was rough. <laughs> it was awesome, but yeah. So I've done this a couple times. Um, and so far it's always, I've always been the only girl, so I'm kind of used to it. Rock on. Um, and it's not too bad. I think I am a little slower, but I mean, it doesn't really matter. We all get yeah, there eventually. So, and we're never in any rush, which is kind of nice. Like we just kind of take our time, enjoy the ride. So. I, I see you loving on this puppy over here and yeah. I saw some pictures. There was some <laughs> other dog on the trip, but what, what happened there? Yeah. So <laughs> we picked up a friend. Um, we, we're trying to get through this road, but we didn't realize it was private. Oh. And so we wanted to go up to the house and ask if we could, yeah. you know, just go through. Well, no one was home and they had this dog and the dog ended up following us. Yeah. I think it was super Escort. excited to see people on these strange things yeah. just biking super fast. So it ended up following us for a long time and we were hoping it would just tire out and go home, but it never really did. So we think it followed us about 15 miles. Huh. Um, this dog was a champ though, um, super sweet. Uh, we eventually called the Larimer Humane Society to come pick her up okay. um, and got a hold of the owner. So we were able to give her back, but it was definitely an adventure, a first time I think for all of us to have a little dog friend. <laughs> so did anything go wrong for you guys? Like what? Jeremy forgot a sleeping bag. Jeremy, you I forgot, forgot your to pack my <laughs> sleeping bag. I unpacked and repacked to try to distribute the weight and I guess yeah, the last time I packed, it's a lot lighter I, now. I, I left out the sleeping bag, yeah, and that's I was like, awesome. "Oh, this is great. It's not that <laughs> heavy." Well, that's one of the reasons why. So I showed up thinking that I had it. I looked around. I was like, "Well," concluded I don't have a sleeping bag with me. So I did have a pretty good tent. Um, so I used that, and I had, a, had a, a sleep pad that kept me pretty warm underneath. But uh, I sort of MacGyvered a sleeping bag. I always carry, when I go camping, no matter what, I carry a couple of extra garbage bags. Oh, yeah. So, and some electrical tape. So <laughs> I cut the garbage bags into a sort of blanket type uh, shape and taped them together with electrical tape to make myself a sort of MacGyvered uh, sleeping bag. Huh. I had my feet inside of one of the bags and then the other two were taped on and covered the top part of my body. Wow. Um, I put on all of my clothes that I had with me and I stayed pretty warm and I slept through the night pretty well. Right. Well, when you're impressed with how it worked out for Jeremy's bike, because there's extra cables up yeah. front, like all that stuff, you were able to get them out of the way enough? Yeah, we had to put the front rack on his bike because we didn't want to squish the electrical cables that yeah. ran from the, the throttle to the, the brake or the, the bottom, whatever you call it. The motor. The motor, yes. Motorized bottom bracket. That was it, I mean. No one died? Fix? No, yeah. no. I mean, not like last trips we've had. Uh-oh. So, like, 
That's why we got to keep taking membership, right? Yeah. That's where all these new learn, guys come you from. You learn, like, I'm not doing this again. I'm going to get a bigger gear range. I'm going to do uh-huh. this better next time. So you constantly get better at it, and then you're like, find ways to tweak things. And you're like, no, I want to I want to try this with this, and then do this, and then that. That's great. Yeah, I can tell. If something goes wrong, it's usually a good time to take a break. Yeah. That's right. Pull over. Yeah. Maybe this is a good camp my, spot. Uh, my favorite story, I was along the Tetons one time, and I had a flat tire, and I was starting to get all... You know, angry about you know nine flat tires. On well, there. Jason, this you were kind of the leader, right? Yeah, I mean, I took a lot of your guys' ideas. Brian's done it a lot. You're a great leader because you're not taking all the credit, right? <laughs> yeah. You're like, no, no. I'm gonna say everybody had a part to fill. You know, everybody. We all teamed up together. We were like, well, we can't camp here. Let's keep going. Where was this? Where did you go? Or can you say? I don't want to give away your secret gonna, spot or anything, but oh, we went to like Halligan Reservoir, but then we found out. It's not public, like everyone says. Oh, no. Yeah, so it's definitely private. I think it has to be public only if you know somebody on okay. the res. Yeah. So we ended up going what, Unit B, Cherokee Park. Something like that. Cherokee yeah, Park. It's Unit, a state park. It's a state park, but we noticed there was a, a door that said, please close behind you. Yeah. So we just opened it up, went on in, no problems. Good camping spot, super flat, right by a river, lots of trees. Yeah. And then we just... It looks beautiful. Yeah, it was awesome. What so was that? It was, what, 58? Yeah, 58, 58 the first day. First was... day, and then because we took that long way, that, that the dead scenic end. Route, the scenic route. The scenic route had to come all the way back. <laughs> and then we ended up uh, the next day. a nice storm come in, too. Yeah, we cool. got caught in that for like I 30, saw that. There was like mud and, you know. 30, it was like maybe it dropped down to like, what, 48 degrees? Yeah, it was pretty chill. And then we ended up putting on our rain gear for maybe a half hour. Yeah, we got lucky, I yeah. must say. Because yeah. it was definitely, you could watch it coming around we were thinking we were going to get hit really bad but i think we literally just squeezed I think right we, through like yeah. two storms like if we didn't take we that other it. way around like the dead end we mm-hmm. probably would have been in it a lot longer yeah i think so uh, cleared up you could see the stars i mean it, it honestly couldn't have gotten any better beautiful whatever. trip yeah. yeah they hiked to the top of the mountain I, I would just say for anyone who's thinking about doing it just try it out and see if it's for you it's not too hard First, some make, some friends, yeah, make some friends. Yeah, make some friends who know out, what right? they're doing. Yeah. Go with them. And uh, yeah, if you like uh, biking and camping, I think it's a great combination awesome. too. Keep things like my uh, my coffee mug easily accessible because I need to have my coffee. Or no, and, and people know where you're at too. And, yes, it is. Uh, it is a good bear deterrent. I was wondering. I yeah. Do, um, when I'm out and I have this bell right here, it doesn't work so well while I'm loaded. But I've seen those before. Yeah. They kind of jingle. Like yeah, a, so while I'm out on the trail, that really helps. Huh. Um, it doesn't startle other trail users. Um, huh. Yeah, it's a very pleasant. And so you got a hydraulic disc brakes. You got mm-hmm. like, it's just neat. And there's your propane. It looks like yep, for your yep, for my camp stove. For your camp stove. Um, it fits well down there. Uh, usually, if you have like a water bottle uh, at this location, you're gonna get mud in the, the hole. So you, <laughs> you got to get your iron from somewhere, <laughs> right? Right. right. Um, so I put that down there. I just recently put my tube right here, which uh, I have a, a spare tube. Are you running tubeless? And that's uh, just no. to no. Okay. Uh, my opinion, tubeless while you're touring is harder to repair than just you, repairing a, a, flat, a yeah a patch. Tube. A yeah, a patch or carrying a spare tube. Because mm-hmm. uh, what I would do is I would just change the tire, put the new tube on, and then when I get to the campsite, I would patch the the punctured tire. Yeah, thank you, Brian. This yeah. is, I mean, phenomenal looking bike. Thank you. Uh, have you had it for a long time? or uh, Just over a year. Just Can over you year. say how much do you think you spent on all uh, this stuff? I think I was at about... Thirty-five hundred, about four thousand dollars total. Okay, okay, I, not I, bad. I think, yeah, I'd have to, I'd have to think real hard about that. It's Just, been like piecemeal well, over yeah, time. Well, I, I mean, I bought everything together, but I'd have to kind of add it up because I'm a, I'm the type of. Yeah consumer that doesn't look at the price I just look, look <laughs> yeah up. like the experience just, I'll, I'll, I'll read the reviews and I'm like okay that that's doing well you um, read the reviews yes. sweet <laughs> awesome man well, so Jeremy you were talking about getting to camp and being tired and even with the electric assist it takes a toll and I mean you don't yeah. have Crohn's disease you were probably tired right I like, was but, tired as hell <laughs> so when you got to the, the campsite I one of the things that we've been talking about I saw an episode of Bill Nye saves the world recently. He was talking about medicinal marijuana and actually like CBDs. And he said, this is actually a treatment for people with Crohn's disease. Right. And have you done this before? What's your experience? Yeah, so CBD, uh, I guess it's an anti-inflammatory and it's extremely beneficial for uh, Crohn's disease, which is mostly an, an inflammation yeah. sort of issue. So 
Um, but also, you know, I have a hip injury, so um, at the end of the day, having an anti-inflammatory to sort of help recover, um, you know, was really helpful. Um, Are there side effects? And did and I, I brought you over here, Stephanie, because I thought I heard you say you took CBDs too, like to rest yeah. at night or to heal or something. Yeah, I did. Um, I my knee was killing me by the I end. I feel ya. I feel yeah. ya on that. Yeah. <laughs> I have some knee issues, so it was definitely in pain. And I took some CBD, and I also took. Uh, Jason gave me some arthritis medicine. Okay. Way to make me feel old. <laughs> oh no. But, uh, you don't look old. You're like <laughs> it definitely helped, and the CBD, you know, just kind of really relaxed my body. Mm -hmm. And so by the time I went to bed, I felt really good. I was super relaxed. And then just waking up in the morning, I felt so much better. I didn't have super tight or sore muscles. Okay. Um, and I just felt like I was ready to go. I'm not trying, I'm not like endorsing drugs and stuff, but I think that there are obviously some really beneficial uses. Yeah. Uh, uh oh, we got a, we got an adventurer over here. <laughs> And we are in Colorado, so uh, marijuana itself is is legal here, recreationally, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just calling it out as, like, we're talking about assistive technology, and there are also assistive medicines exactly. and different things like that. I'm glad it worked, but so, what were the side effects? that? So it, do, it does make you kind of sleepy, so it's good for taking, like, you know, as a sort of a recovery thing in, in the evening. I wouldn't want to do it in the morning or during my ride. I feel like, you know, there would be some sort of side effects that would make you feel kind of lethargic or, you know, um, maybe slow down your your mental perception a little bit, but you know, I, I do use supplements and um, I, I do have some vitamin deficiencies. I, I took a lot of B12, so there's an organic B12 spray that we used. Um, like on your tongue or what yeah, do you spray yeah. it? Jason and I sprayed it on our tongue and it gave us a lot of energy the second day to, to get us back on the road, huh. um, as well as uh, caffeine, you know. A little bit of red ball. Coffee, so. Careful mixing those drugs, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we all drank coffee and some vitamins and that's what kept us going in the daytime and the CBD was great to recover in the evening. This is awesome. It looks like they're over there checking out the footage. You guys, thank you so much. Like, I just want to thank everyone again. And you know, this, this is not exactly a sponsored video, but the guys at Small Planet, they, they hooked us up with this bike, right? And this was a team effort, like kind of a gift to Jeremy. We're friends and stuff. And this is something you use as your car now, basically, right? Pretty much, to yeah. I've been using it to commute locally. Um, I just want to emphasize that this is something that I would not, you know, a bikepacking trip going uh, almost 100 miles in two days would never be possible for me without an e-bike. You know, um, oh. these guys, uh, I have a lot of respect for them. They're able to, to use their muscles. That's right. Good job. <laughs> as, as someone who isn't physically capable of that it's just it opens up a whole new world to me to have an e-bike to go out there touring looking at the scenery the beautiful rocky mountains here in and colorado the peace. you said this yeah. like you need that reflection yeah, and just and sort of that sense of peace that escape from the yeah. stress and everyday life of being in the city and working it was awesome awesome buddy thank you so much thank you very much yeah. this is great you guys, thank you again. Yeah, no sure. worries. I appreciate the footage too. I'm gonna yeah. overlay some of that as an outro. Sure. And then again, just for, for you know, helping everyone make yeah, this yeah. happen. This no, is- they're, they're a good group. This is, this is wonderful. That's what I love to do. Do you guys have a website or a call out if anyone lives in Fort Collins and wants to connect or something? That's a good question. <laughs> no, we're, we'll I guess we should work on that. On that. I'm, I'm gonna make like a forum post maybe. Yeah, I'll link to it. Let me make real quick. Yeah, <laughs> well, whatever, I'll, I'll put some links in the description and back at the forum. I'll link to that because I'm gonna try to call out some of the accessories that these guys use. So if you're outfitting a bike, you know what they got. So have fun out there, ride safe. Love you guys.